It's called Heavenly Bodies. It's an essay. First, suppose that the Earth is a spherical body, turning round upon its own poles, the quantities of days and nights determined by the arches of the parallels, intersected by the circle that is the terminator of light, light, excuse me, and the arch that is situate in the illuminated hemisphere prescribeth the length of the day, and the remainder is the quantity of the night. I can imagine it. He's a flat-assed young engineer with nice legs, smiling and mustachioed. She works in cancer treatment, dosimetry, and has a degree in art history. It's the Christmas party for the cancer treatment company. She has just moved from Connecticut to California and needs a date. Her co-worker says he has a brother. That's how it happens. There are few photographs from those years before me, few stories. There's the wedding album, but in it, no photographs of the honeymoon itself. First class tickets, the sand of Waikiki, body warm water under the moon. It's easier to understand who I am without them loving each other in the honeymoon way. To have had that love and lost it, a continuum is present. My memory lost along it. I imagine the Christmas party is formal in that awful very late 70s way. Well, he says, I like to sail on the weekends. My brother and I have a small boat on the Delta. Or maybe he says, Art history, huh? Well, I love photography. I had a dark room when I was a kid. He says, I hope you're beautiful. What is parallax? It is the difference between the apparent and true place of the heavenly body. Have the stars been observed to have any sensible parallax? A few have been observed to have a small parallax. What is the cause of their having no appreciable parallax? Because they are at such an immense distance from us. My mother is a beautiful woman, not in the way you may think I mean. She has never been what anyone would call trendy, not even very stylish. She is practical and intelligent, healthy and strong. She is the kind of woman, and men of my generation remark on this, who ages well. I don't remember my father telling my mother she was beautiful. I'm sure it happened, but I never heard it. I try to recall moments of affection between them, but the only image that comes is of the two of them in the kitchen, beneath fluorescent lights, hugging and calling each other buns. They would kiss sometimes then, and sometimes on a birthday or at Christmas upon receipt of a gift, but only ever briefly and pronouncedly on the lips, releasing with a loud smack. If I ever saw them hold hands, it was so rarely that I cannot now imagine them linked. Who are the Antipodes? those who live on opposite sides of the earth. My father has always been quick to tell me he is proud of me. The only time I remember him telling me I was beautiful, besides before proms and on my wedding day, was an afternoon when I was 18, the summer I spent lifeguarding. It was either right before or right after they announced their impending divorce. I stood sunbaked in their bedroom in my Speedo one piece, asking him a question. When he looked up from the shoes, he was untying to listen to me and the look glassed over suddenly with some distant surprise, and he remarked, I don't remember what he remarked, something about me in the swimsuit, but from then on I had a body. Construct a figure and show what is meant by the true and apparent places of a heavenly body. I remember being a child of questions. Where do the dinosaurs go? How do prisons make rainbows? How do airplanes fly? My mother and father were capable answerers, but somehow, it's the questions I asked my father that I remember most. Why does everything look blue underwater? What is cantilever? My father believes in God, but it was my mother who taught me about such things. My mother isn't sure she believes in God. What I'm trying to say is that any discussion of my relationship to my body must include a discussion of faith as well. My parents taught me little about either. I am grown now, but still a child of questions. These are mostly about my body, about what it wants from me, about what kind of body it wants to be. I can tell you so many facts about it, but always there lingers the unsettled feeling that I don't know what to do with it. For instance, I have chosen the ungendered pronoun for my body. My language itself admits to our estrangement. Why does the moon move out of the telescope? Why do we call things heavenly bodies? Why are falling stars not really stars? 
In what directions are the rays of light thrown off from a luminous body? In straight lines and in all directions. Are the stars luminous or opaque bodies? They are luminous bodies. What is the distance of the nearest fixed star, Alpha Centauri? It is so far distant that a cannonball going 500 miles an hour would take four millions of years to reach it. My husband and I are enjoying this island where the best thing we have done so far is sit in a cabana on the beach for eight hours straight. No schedule, no touring, no bucket list for the trip, and even tonight, no dinner. Instead, we get very drunk. Very quickly, and quite accidentally, Anwil and I, as the sun dips low. First, we share the bottle of champagne, then move on to Jim Beam. Until suddenly the moon comes up, it's twilight, and I hear myself say to him, want to fool around before dinner? <laughs> and he is on the chair, and I am on him. The perfume I bought today on the hillside of Haleakala, garlanding us in citrus and spice. I am dimly aware of my reflection in the black curve of the hotel TV screen, in which he must see us as we rise and fall and rise in fluid half-light. Small breaths escape my mouth and make a sound like a candle sputtering, and then we are on the bed. I am spread in every direction, luminous and distant as a star. It's midnight, and we aren't hungry anymore. It has sometimes happened that in seeing such a light at that distance, I know not how to resolve whether it came towards me or retreated from me, when as it did in reality approach nearer to me. But what need I speak of this? In objects far remote and luminous, a small approach or recession is imperceptible. Sometimes I can't get into lovemaking. I listen to the radio on my commute, and there they are, women in Egypt, for instance, taking martial arts classes because they assume they will be attacked on the street. I slump in my seat when I think about it. Women in the world being abused for being alive right now as I write and later as you read this. Women weeping beneath ill-named lovers. When my husband was too young, he somehow knew it. At that time, he had no God to please, no particular ethic to obey. He was 15. He says the girl told him she wanted him to. He says she was going to show it all to him, do it all. Anything he wanted, she knew all about it. It was what he'd been waiting for. And the second there was anything to see or know, he realized he was in way over his head. There was mystery, power, overwhelming. He turned away. Images of these women in Egypt, of girls at my high school or university or workplace, intermingle with memories of my own moments of visceral and emotional losing of self. I think about what we call losing her virginity, about tolerating an unwanted arm around the waist or neck because we've been told by someone to be polite. I think these things as memories flicker in and out. Thirteen, taunted by others at lunch to kiss the first boyfriend whom I keep for one week. Fifteen, an unwanted hand on the budding of my right breast while on the bus for a church choir trip. Twenty, betting new nakedness against a breakup and losing. Twenty-two, hearing myself, voice muffled against the neck and chest above me, saying yes, then no, then I don't know, and meaning I feel so alone and at 24, lying about it. And my husband's desire for me separates from him. It creeps along the still red edges of these memories, becomes an entity, creature-like, and I realize I'm afraid of something that is in him, but not of him. And what anyway is desire? My husband beside me in the dark. We are at home, a weeknight. I say, I'm tired. I say, as the ceiling fan moves the air, I can hear the curtain rod clicking. He wants me every day. He tries not to mention it too often, but I can see it in the corner of his eyes and smile, some electric rippling showing through. I think I should be flattered, and sometimes I wonder if I should be flattered, and sometimes I actually am. I roll over. I say, can I cuddle with you? I lay my head on his shoulder, his chest. We hold hands. My neck rests at a funny angle. My head hurts. I say so and roll back over. <coughs> He cuddles against my back then and sighs, I'm tired, he says, and frustrated, and I get lonely sometimes. I look through the gap between the curtain and the wall, through the window at the one star I can see. Like, lonely in general, I say, or lonely with me? Lonely with you, he says. I watch that star. I don't say, I get lonely too. Don't say, what if I don't know how to love? 
I say nothing for a long time. Then it's morning again, and he's gone. Thank you.